Well, boy, oh boy, welcome to the uh, companion podcast to Sam Roberts' show, Sam and Kathy. Uh, but, and Kathy Kelly's here. Hi. Hey, Kathy. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. You're good. But I, I noticed there were... There was there was there was emotions going through you at the end of Sam Roberts' show this week. What were they? You were like, I, here's what you, Kathy did that was so brilliant because yeah. at the end of Sam Roberts' show this week, uh, it uh, it was the last show for the time being because I'm moving on to something else here at Sirius. It's the last night show forever. It's the last night show. Yeah, it's the last regular night show unless. For ev- Er. <laughs> <laughs> You're killing me, Smalls. I I never like to say last, especially in radio, because you know, two years from now they could be like, "Good news, you can go back to nights." So, oh. but as far as this incarnation goes, yes, we are moving on to the next thing, which is going to be you know even better. Uh, but and all the all the fans and everything can come uh, with us, and it's going to be amazing. But uh, it was still like we've built this like special little thing. On nights at Sirius XM that Sam and Kathy, this podcast, has been a big part of. Yeah. Um, But I was so happy because at the end of the show, I was saying thank yous to everybody. And I felt, you know, everybody getting a little bit emotional. And you were, you were, you know, you you said something very nice. And I could see some emotion in your face. And I was like, oh. There's no emotion in my face. Oh, of course not. Of course not. But then, cunning woman that you are. You saw Adrian welling up in there. <laughs> and so before before you could get, like, emotional enough that you might cry, you're like, oh, Adrian's crying, Adrian's crying. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is it. Because then that way, I like. I pass it off to someone else. Yeah, yeah. And that way anybody who was feeling any kind of emotions was like, oh, look at the girl cry. <laughs> look at the girl cry. And I was like, yep, yep. This is what the show is about. This is what the show is about. Uh, but the unfortunate thing is, as far as this show goes, that – and we'll try – we're going to try to figure something out. Mm-hmm. You know, right now, everything's up in the air. Everything changes. But, uh, you know, Kathy and I work for big companies, and big companies have uh, contracts and clauses and uh, 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 situations and permissions and whatnot. And uh, uh, so for the time being, this will be the last podcast. This will be the last Sam and Kathy podcast, mm-hmm. which I really like doing. Um, and I, I like that it's built this little niche following, you know what I mean? Like yeah. there's always like these people that, uh, chime into us every week to be like, oh, this Sam and Kathy, that Sam and Kathy, or people who call into the serious show. Like, remember when you were talking about blah, blah, blah. Or that one Monday where a podcast didn't go up and got a lot of tweets. Yeah. About it not being there. That's <laughs> when you know you've actually, <laughs> you've actually made an impact, right? When you've actually done something. And you're like, oh, I thought. My, I mean, my mom doesn't even listen to this. <laughs> like, usually, my mom will watch it, and that's all I expect. And then, when other people do, it's a surprise. Yeah, yeah. I feel like, uh, but, but, you know, like I said, we're we're gonna try to figure something out because I go, I go, Kathy. What we could do is like, I'll just give you the podcast, and it can become your podcast, and I'll be a guest on it. She was like, I don't think I can do a podcast. And I was like, Oh. <laughs> Well, then how are we going to do this? She was like, no, that was my scam for your podcast. Yeah. I was a guest on your podcast. And then I was like, uh, uh, uh. so we got to figure it out. Uh, what, what's been new your scam as Kevin Undergaard? New, would yeah, say. we got to figure out the new scam. But there's one thing we do. It's figure out scams. Uh, and I'm sad to leave my show behind. I know. I think I know it's for the right reason. You know, you doubt everything. I doubt everything. I know, I know it. it's for the right reason. Right, you yeah. get it. You know, I got to tell you something about this Kathy Kelly. Like, there are a lot of people who would not take this well in your position because you kind of have a comfortable little niche on Sam Roberts' show. And you can, and, and regardless of, because, you know, it would appear that I'm going on to do this morning show potentially with Jim Norton. Yeah. And you go like, okay. And instead of being like worried about, I don't see where I fit immediately. And you know, what does this mean for me? Cause I thought I was going to me, I, I, me, I, me, 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 I, 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 me. You go, no, this is what, 
the next progression is in what is going on here. Not what I'm doing here. Oh, no, I just internalize all of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All, all, that, all that is said in your head, and you just say what you're supposed to say. <laughs> I'm so proud of you, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kathy, congratulations on WWE. It went to the right person. <laughs> no, I legit am so, so, so excited for you because that's i mean like before we even really were friends like i saw all of that for you so it just seems like the the next natural step i'm more shocked at how fast it happened like i know that like for you it was this like 11 year build but for me it was like i I saw what you were going to build and I I didn't think that it would happen like I remember the little wins of like oh yeah now it's like the the daily show now it's like yeah. moved to 3 hours like it's expanded and then for it to be this so quick is just like crazy Yeah it it, it definitely feels quick to me too and maybe it's because this leg of the journey wasn't as long like me being off of Opie and Anthony's show or Opie's show or whatever the show was, like it's been a year and a half. Whereas all the other kind of legs of the journey have been years in the making, right? So like, okay, a year and a half goes by and then it's like, okay, next thing, next thing. But I think that's what happens. I think that like if you set out on a course and you're like, this is just what I'm going to do. Like, I'm committed to this. And, you know, I would say this is what I'm going to do for my life, Mm -hmm. but that's pretentious. And if I get fired from enough radio jobs, this isn't what I'm going to do with my life. But for the foreseeable, for any sort of, for all intents and purposes, this is it. This is what I'm doing. And I think once you really start to put the years in and the ball starts to roll, I think those those legs get smaller. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, it's just it's and it and it and it tripped me out so much because as all this was happening, you know, I've talked about like Malcolm Gladwell before, and really the only reason I kn- it life is a weird thing. The only reason <laughs> I know about Malcolm Gladwell is because Chris Rock referred to me as Malcolm Gladwell. Oh. He was making fun of me. He's like, oh, there's Malcolm Gladwell, right? It's a name drop right there. Right. So then I looked him up. I'm like, oh, he's the guy from Outliers. He's the guy from Blink. I started getting the books on tape. I started researching. But the reason that's weird is because I'm convinced, and I think if you asked him, he would tell you, I was in his movie, Top 5, and I got a lot more screen time. I, You know, it was like 30 seconds, but 30 seconds, you know this, Kathy, you're from the big city of lights, Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's called, right? The big city of lights? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, yeah. The windy city of lights, Los Angeles. Yeah, that's it. Um, the apple. Yeah. The big apple. The light apple. <laughs> the apple of lights. The windy apple. Right. Um, of lights. That's it. You've lived in all those cities, actually. But <laughs> you know that, like, 30 seconds of screen time is a lot in a movie. Yeah. And so, and and it didn't have, I could have easily been framed out. I could have been edited out, blah, blah, blah. I'm convinced the only reason I got as much screen time, the only reason I got any screen time is because he's, it's his movie. He wrote, directed, starred, produced, top five. He's in the editing room. I know. Looking at that, thinking it's funny that I look like Malcolm Gladwell to him. Let's keep him in the movie. (laughs) And so, and now I think back on it and, and I've kind of, one of his big theories that clicked with me was that he goes through and looks at people that are very good at things and that have excelled at things, not even very good, excelled at things. And statistically, why? Like scientifically, why? And he studies, like, like how does this happen? It's not just luck, right? And so he's talking about, like, for instance, athletes, I can't remember what month it is, but athletes born in September – have statistically a much better chance at succeeding because they're older mm-hmm. than the other kids in their class. Yeah. I mean, that's what happens. Yes. There's a cutoff. Yes, because there are cutoffs. I yeah. was uh, the best thrower on my t-ball team because I was born in September, and uh, 
Is that with the position you played, thrower? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to be a left-handed shortstop. Oh, oh, I see, I see. I just, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, like, the, like statistically stuff like that. But his big, his big sticking point is the rule of 10,000 hours. And that rule is that practicing for 10,000 hours will make you great at something. And even people that are born naturally gifted, the people who have long-term st- success and the people who are at the top statistically put in all those hours. They're always going to be freaks and, as they're called, outliers. But Nerds. <laughs> but statistically, that's what it said. Whether is that it's what a, he refers to them as? That's right. <laughs> dorks, actually. Yeah, dorks. I believe is the... <laughs> Whether it's athletes, musicians, artists, whoever it is, it's people, flautists, it's people that have, (laughs) flautists, you know? They have to practice too, Adrian. I know, I know. I also played flute. Skin flute. (laughs) No. Ah, Nailed her. Nailed her. Hope high school was fun, Kathy. (laughs) Nailed her. (laughs) So... So he said that, you know, people who put in the 10,000 hours are the ones that excel. That's that's the secret to success. And 10,000 hours breaks down to 10 years of intensive practicing yeah. and work and labor and blah, blah, blah. And as all this is happening, right, as as sort of... All this news is coming in. This is what you're going to be doing. You know, you're going to be here. You go do some practice shows with Jim, blah, blah, blah. I start getting alerts on my phone from LinkedIn and it's people leaving me messages. And I'm like, first of all, why is my phone set to beep when my LinkedIn, when something happens on my LinkedIn profile, who cares? And second of all, what's everybody leaving me messages for? And I go to the LinkedIn account and I find out that it's 10 years since I was hired by XM. And I'm like, like, holy shit. Like, like, you know what I mean? That it just, it just lined up that way. Exactly. And I'm like, this this stuff just, it just happens. And you know, that's why it's, it, everything that I've ever planned for, and I think you might be the same way, Kathy, because you've had some amazing successes yourself. But everything that I know that I've ever planned for and been like, here's the timeline. Here's what age yeah. I'll do this at. Here's what age I'll do that at. Blah, 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 blah. None of it works out. We've talked about that so, in the past of like, I remember literally at 16 years old, having a meeting with someone at Viacom thinking that I was going to be the next host of TRL. Right. Right. That didn't happen. I talked about it on this show this week uh, when I said that when I got hired by XM f- f- to work with Opie and Anthony, I was like, one year. Mm-hmm. And then launching on my own platform, superstardom, baby. I didn't even know the industry. <laughs> like, what was I thinking? Hmm. But that's what you think. Yeah. That's what you, that that's what that's what people think. It's the smart ones that like sit back and go like, "Oh wait, let me figure it out." What were you gonna say, Adrian? It took me about two hours to realize when I first got here as an intern, right? To realize that all of my expectations mm-hmm. were yeah. garbage. Well, it's one yeah. of those things like looking yeah. from the outside. It looks so easy because you don't see all of the hard work that goes into it. You see the glory moments, especially like yeah. in radio yes. or in TV. And- you see the the good moments, and then. Also, it's one of those things where um, every single person that comes in that's ambitious thinks, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to change the game. And it's like, exactly. well, wouldn't yeah. you expect that it would have been changed already? Right. Like, after you come in, you're like, oh, that's why it wasn't changed. You know what changed. happened to me on my first day? What? I don't know if you remember this, but my first day as an intern. I remember you I, were an I, intern. I, I, spilled, <laughs> I spilled coffee on Jim Norton. <laughs> oh. My first day. <laughs> Did he yell at you? He, he went, ah, fuck. And you, the, the thing I remember most vividly is you exploding and, and, and cackling. Because <laughs> I was in the studio, right? And me being so embarrassed because Jim was how I had found out about the show. I was a huge, huge fan of his. <laughs> and, and, I just, just, and then you brought me on the after show my first day. And I, oh, and I was like, how, what was it like? How did to... it feel? And I was like, it didn't feel good. <laughs> Holy shit. Was I laughing still? Mm-hmm. That's great. And then I listened to myself. On on my commute home, I listened to it, mm-hmm. and I realized I am no. This is not going to go how I planned. No, no. And, and then, then you were smart enough to just ride the wave. Well, then about I would say it was two or three weeks into my internship, I was trying to watch as much as I could, and I realized that like you were the guy. 
Well, and and I was like, okay, I have to do what he does. Uh -huh. I have to follow his lead as much as possible. That's what I mean. I that's the, what because I don't know. I don't know my ass for my armpit in this situation. See, <laughs> Kathy's right about people who come, and you're. I mean, and it'll work the same way. You'll see. Kathy's right about people who come in and say I'm going to change the game. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, you're not, dude. Oh, well, I thought that. Right, of course. So did I. Like, no. Right now, it. based off my expectations, yeah. I should be in the south of France at two supermodels. Right? That's on it. My yacht. I got my own rules, baby. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm a fucking international star. Right, right. Because the trick is not to come in and change the game because nobody does that. The trick is to come in and master the game. The trick is to come in and play the game. You got to learn it first. And Yeah. To learn the game, play the game, master the game, and be the best that you can be. At that game, I had an uh, an intern that I talked to. That I don't know who he was, but he was interning for Opie recently. He called the show. You remember? He called the show, and he goes, uh, "Like he's an intern. He had a kid. He had all this stuff going on." Oh, that was, older guy. I yeah. remember him. Yeah. I was like, "Dude, I don't know what you're thinking." Like, I was like, "Radio is is not what it used to be." And blah blah blah. He's like, "Well, you got it done." Blah blah blah. I was like, "Okay." Well, he was like, well, I was like, well, you better work hard. Like, you got to dedicate everything to this. And he was like, yeah, no, I plan to. And I go, I go, all right, cool. But, like, your kid's going to be 10, 15 years old before you actually make a dent. And he goes, well, that's why I plan on doing it twice as fast. And I go, oh, okay. Like, in that yeah. moment. That was, my, that was my mindset. You've right. right. But you know now you're wrong. Because I, cause I was thinking about it like the same way I used to think about sports. Yes. If I do twice as many you know, sprints as everybody else, I'm going to eventually yeah. catch up to the guys who are better than me. But it's not like that. It's not like a mechanical thing. No. Where it's like do this many no. and you'll be fine. And I, I would hope that you would – anybody would think – like if that were the way it was done – Everybody would do it. Why wouldn't I have done it faster? Oh, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like because I'm doing it as you see. We're told that we're like – especially this age group that were the best things in sliced bread. We are the right. best human being that's ever been birthed by our parents or whomever in our lives. And that's why we think that we can do it better. Right. And like I said, you don't see the, the trials and tribulations that people go through. You only see the, the, the good moments. So, and the real blessing of being 33 at this point And in this, like we, I, <laughs> Somebody tweeted me a YouTube link of my first appearance, which was my first day as an intern on <laughs> Opie and Anthony. When you went to get Anthony's uh, this video, video game. game. Yeah. And I've listened to that. And first of all, I played it. And Jess was in an emotional mood anyway. But as I played it, she started crying. Aww. As I was playing it, I was like, well, I was like laughing. I was like, first of all, I was 21. I was like, I'm 21, sir. And I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I was 21. I'm 33 now. But she's crying, and I go, Jess, what? I was, like, laughing. I was like, why? And I was like, you know, I put my arm around her. I was like, why are you crying? She was like, because you were just, you were so young, and you were so sweet, and it's just, it's been so hard. It's been so hard this whole time, and we've, we've gotten here, but you were just so nice. And I was like, I know, I know. But the real... Are you not nice anymore? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, you wouldn't say it was nice. But the real blessing in being 33 and being able to be observant of this this entire time is I've gotten to see the people that quote unquote did it twice as fast. I've gotten to see everybody that succeeded, oh, yeah. Adrian, when you wanted to succeed. I've gotten to see every 24-year-old success story. And it doesn't. And I've gotten now, I've been in it long enough that I've gotten to see them two years after that. Three years after that, when it didn't pan out because it was too early. I've gotten to, when it when it's over, when it's like, but, and now they're like, oh, no, I'm still having a good time. But no, 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 I'm not. I'm actually not. I'm not working in uh, entertainment anymore. I no, I got a pretty good job. I, I'm doing this. I'm doing. And it's like there's this thing in their eyes that's like defeat. Yeah, it's defeat. I've, and I've seen it here. Yeah. And it's this thing of like. I thought my life was going to go a certain way. It didn't, and I've given up. And it's like, you're 29. Like, how can you, how can, no, no, like. I don't understand the giving up. Because. It's the disappointment. Right, because what happens is, especially if you get a certain amount of success. Mm -hmm. because and then you, it, 
it gets taken away. Because you won't start from scratch again. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like, and you, if you were handed it too early, right? Because it'll get it'll go you don't away. Know how to work hard for it, right? It'll go away, and you won't start from scratch again. It just is not. It, it doesn't. It very rarely happens. Do you think it's important in a way to for someone to say like I, I don't know if it's cliche, but to like hit a rock bottom early, like to really to, no. to fuck up. You don't have to hit a rock bottom because uh-huh. I don't think you have to. You don't need. You can have an aha moment without hitting a rock bottom. If yeah. you're delusional, then I hope you hit a rock bottom and somehow snap out of it. But I think that if you're smart, your perspective just changes over time, and you and you and you come to this realization that oh like, my god, like I'm just wait. I need to just be in this right now. Like this wouldn't. I I, I need to just stay in this and just figure out what's happening. If you're smart, you kind of get – you figure out what's going on with the current and then you figure out that, oh, I just need to ride the wave. And you start – because what happens is you don't need to hit a rock bottom because hopefully you start meeting people that are some level of successful. And the people who succeed meet those people, whether it's the ultra successful like happened to me and you, Adrian, which is Opie and Anthony and Jim and blah, 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 or it's the people that are just – Two or three levels more successful than you. Whatever it is. And I've seen it happen to me by new people, like new interns or whatever. What will happen is either you're smart enough to see that person successful. Like you said when you saw me, let me ride this wave. Even if he's not like – I didn't. But when I saw you, like I was like, I don't know what the fuck he's doing, but I know he's doing something right. Right. And And I should follow his lead because he's – the next right guy. and you know i'm not like this world famous guy but you know building like as soon as i sat yes. in on one of the after shows like when i started to understand how things work mm-hmm. it's like okay this is going to be something eventually and i told you when i was an intern i was like whatever you do i want to be yeah i know you did say that you did and most people don't stick by it yeah which is an advantage like that's also that's a big secret i told you and when you got the noon show and you didn't I didn't work on your show. I was telling you, you tell me when. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's being sincere about that. That's when you yeah. stick with it. Right. And you can always tell when somebody's not, too. Yeah. Like, you can always, when they're like, whatever you want, dude. Whatever. Like, and I'm like, that's not true. That's not true. <laughs> like, they're not going to follow you. They don't. Like, you see, you catch them saying it to somebody else down the hall. You're like, <laughs> what are you doing, man? Yeah. But, like, yeah, sticking to something like that is a huge part of it and committing to something, but you have to be smart about what you do. Like, you can make bad decisions in that way. But seeing somebody who even is a couple levels more successful than you, and you have a choice of either paying attention to them and just watching them. You don't need to fucking start a whole mentor relationship. Just be around and watch them. Just take notice of what they're doing. Observe. Observe. And be like, okay, and then maybe do a little research. Maybe figure out, you know, what some of their journey was like. And then start to learn from that. And then as you get successful, find somebody who's more successful than you and start to learn from them. You can either do that or the other option is you see someone who's successful, you get jealous, you get shitty, you get competitive. And you try to beat them. And I've watched that happen too. And it never works out. What are you smiling about? I I met someone when I was really young. I was an intern, um, and she was like maybe five years older than me. Mm-hmm. Um, but she had just she had just turned twenty eight and moved to CBS to do national show at CBS. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like respected her career path, so I was like, okay, I have to like knowing where she started uh, in a small market mm-hmm. in news. Um, and then got to where she's at at 28. Um, I made my goal to get a national show by 27. <laughs> and I at least well, got that one. Yeah, you did. You got yeah. it, though. I got it at, like, 26 and a half. That's funny. Yeah. That's what, Did you think about that when you got it? Oh, 100%. You did. You're yeah. like, nailed it. She never knew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do kind of. But that's I, I, the reason that you were able to do that is because your mentality changed and you started – you weren't, like, working to beat her. You were working for yourself. Yeah. And then you beat her. I mean, like, there are also a million other stories where I've seen people. I'm like, oh, well, like, they start. Like, Maria. Right. Who's a freak of nature because she both got things very early, but then she Maria was, she's maintained it and worked yeah. very hard to to maintain it. Um, but she know. was also, like, I, I, Kevin on his Tomorrow Show, the com, was playing, like, a couple weeks ago, 
Maria's early stuff when she was really young. Mm -hmm. And she was like awesome. Yeah. At hosting. Like she's just born. Freak of nature. Yeah. Yeah. Able to do it. Yeah. On like a a, a very high level. Um, Like some of her early interviews. And I remember like um, back when she was doing, um, I think it was like E.T. on MTV. Yes. Um, I remember watching those and being like, okay, I'm going to buy 18, 19. I will be there. Like. You weren't. That didn't happen. You know what else helped? Mm. Easy on the eyes. Who, me? Yeah. Thank you, man. <laughs> Thank you. That's what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, like, you you see it uh, all the time as it's happening. and that's, But that's why, like, to do it right is a long, heartbreaking, arduous, soul-crushing process. Oh my God. You have to dedicate your entire life, and that's... That was something that you I, also I to noticed lose recently. A lot. Well, yeah, no, everyone always asks, and I, I used to ask this in all of the interviews that I did, is how do you balance it all? And now realizing, and Maria's told me this a million times too, but realizing it myself of like, there is no balance. Like no. you have to sacrifice something. You have to sacrifice a lot of things. Yeah. Um, you have to sacrifice, like, I know you feel this, of like time in your relationship <laughs> or like that's a huge sacrifice. It's sacrificing any time with friends. You have to sacrifice um, going on vacations, which you don't like anyways. Don't go on vacation. Um, but th- there's a lot of things that you sacrifice. Sleep. Like, yeah, I don't do that. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. And but, like, yeah, yeah. You do the, you don't do those things because this is the yes. most important. Yeah. And you realize that it's a lifestyle. It's not, but you something know, you can just like do as a hobby or, you know, I'm lucky. A nine to five. I'm very lucky because that came naturally to me mm-hmm. in the sense that like I wasn't terribly interested in a lot of s- peripheral stuff and that it was just like I always felt like this stuff was more important than the like, oh, but I haven't seen my friends in a while. Let me make sure I get enough sleep. Let me like I never felt that way. But you're right. I mean, moving to doing a show in the day. I've been doing a show at night for 13 months. Over a year. And in that time, we've taken, I mean, Adrian, have we taken any full-on vacations? No. We haven't, right? No. I mean, we had time off. We had two days off for Thanksgiving. <laughs> right. And then we had off for... we didn't do We didn't do Christmas because we did afternoon shows at Christmas. Yeah, we did afternoon shows at Christmas. I'm pretty sure we also did an afternoon show on Christmas Eve. I think we did, too. I think that's right. Yeah. I think that's right. And then we came back and did them the week of New Year's. We didn't take that week off. Yeah, We did them both weeks. And New Year's night. Did we do them New Year's night? There was a show. You did, did, but you didn't do it. Oh, that's right. I went to... You didn't do it live. We went to Kevin's. uh, We did it out of the Tomorrow Show studios. I remember because I got into a huge... Because that was when I first started. Because when I first started with you, I really... Like, I knew what you put in, but I didn't really understand what I was going to have to do to, like, like, like if you get on at, that level. If you, which I'm not, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying, like, no, 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 to, to work on that level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, to be his if, Robin. If, if you look at, like, where my brain was in September of last year to now I'm two different people. And I remember that time because I first started to realize because I got a huge argument with one of my friends because there was a potential that New Year's Eve live, I was going to be here in New York. Uh, board hopping while you were in LA doing a show live and my friend's like what do you mean no you have to just you have to call out I was like I can't there's no call out like I can't do that <laughs> yeah there isn't a call like, out like I got a huge argument with a, a girl that I'm friends with in Baltimore who I was like yeah you can come visit me and she was like no you have to come to me this time and I was like no I can't there's no option but there are so many people that don't understand that yeah they don't and understand they, that they don't I can't want take you to days succeed. off like my mom will be like hey could you do this and I'm like no no I can't because Number one, I don't want to miss anything because then I get in, insane anxiety Work that I'll, I'll, I'll lose my, my spot. Yeah. And two, I don't want to deal with you. And yeah. three, I know that, that missing it hurts me. Yeah, and that's where you, when you started to grow was when you started – it was less about me killing you and more about you missing out. Yeah. And but you... I, did, I did take two days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At one point I did. Yeah. Just because I needed to fucking – Yeah. Yeah, you did. That's right. And, and what happened? Did we give you a hard time? No, right? 
Yeah, he did. <laughs> he, he took a vacation. I took two days. And we started, you told I told him that everyone else was better than him and that his position could be filled easily. We started calling him Vacadrian because <laughs> he took two days off this year. You, uh, <laughs> did he start saying it? I, I, don't, I, I called you Vacadrian. Maybe I, maybe I said it while well, you were Vacadrian gone. Vacadrian started with the Lady Die thing. Oh, that's what it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But Because um, <laughs> yeah, Lady Di was on a vacation. You, you took two days the week before. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, like he'll, he'll be cool with me Mm-mm. taking two days. And I asked you the week the week before when you were there. I was like, would it be cool? And you're like, I guess, yeah. And then I t- I rechecked with you the week of, and you're like, yeah. And then like the day before I was going to leave, you're like, oh. <laughs> and I was like, dude, come on. Like I can't fucking return my tickets. Like, come Must on. Must be nice, though. Must be nice. It was, it was nice. <laughs> enjoy but your I, vacation. I didn't enjoy most of it. You'd, good. Good. I don't enjoy my vacations. So now you can't either. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I just, especially an operation like this that we were doing when we were doing Sam Roberts show at night, it's like it just, and it did, it just paid to have a reputation that we were on when the other shows were off and that it was always us. And And by the way, one of the reasons you couldn't call out is because you were the only one who worked for the show. Yeah, literally for (laughs) I'd say for the majority of shows towards the end, we finally got more help. But for the majority of shows, it was me in this microphone and you in the other room, period. Yeah, yeah, that was it. And so that's another thing. You know what I mean? Like you didn't have that option because it's like, okay, well, what do you who's going to fill in for you then, buddy? I mean, I used to be sick every Sunday night. Like here's another week, and I would I would look I would worry about a potential fuck up coming because there's nobody else for it to tell me. Was it the same? It wasn't like the Sunday blues. Like it wasn't the type of feeling you get on a Sunday. Like oh, the weekend's over, I have to go back to work. No, it was more n- nervousness. Right. It wasn't like oh, I have to go back. But that I think is good because it means that like you're doing something. Care. Yeah, that you're performing on a high level. Yeah, because when I because I I try to look at my own brain as much as possible, and I when I think about when's another time I felt that feeling was the last time I was really passionate about something. That's when I was in sports, right? And because you wanted that. to win, yeah, and you might not, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, and but, you didn't have full control over it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that's 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 that's. But it's also accepting that the mind fucks that I got. From you and from Troy were good for me, but there's all, always lessons in them. Yeah, but it took me. There were and there were even times not that long ago where there were a couple where I was like, "Fuck those guys." Right. But then I go home and I sit there and I'm like, okay, you know. And there's always a takeaway. And if you don't get the takeaway from the mind fuck the first time, you're gonna get double the second time because you because uh, you're gonna get hammered until the takeaway comes. Yeah. Do you remember when I f- fucked up with the CD recorder during one of your interviews? And then for two weeks, the theme on the show is that Adrian's a producer but doesn't understand the basics. Can I tell you something? Yeah. No. You don't. <laughs> no, I don't. No, re- I do. I don't remember. That's. I do. That's, yeah. No, I don't. I don't Thank remember you. that. That's funny though. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know the basics. <laughs> yeah, it was a good lesson. <laughs> it was right, right. I mean, and, I made one little mistake. Yeah, but guess what? That mistake can be avoided if you're as thorough as humanly possible. No, it doesn't happen. Exactly. Do you see how much of a dick I am to. To D bag and hot dog like those like five minutes before we go on the show. You, you don't learn anything from people being nice to you. Yeah, you have and to embarrass them. You've got it. Yeah, there's got to be like most people. Maybe not everybody works this way. People who win, people who really win, have to feel like if they lose, it's going to be bad. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Whether that is because. You're an athlete, and if you lose, you're going to feel – you just had that feeling. Like you just, you're just you going to beat yourself up if you lose. Or if I see you're not going to beat yourself up if you lose, then you're at least going to know that I'm going to beat you up if you lose. And then you're going to be like, okay, well, then I can't – I can't. I'm not, I don't want to deal with that, so let me not do this. Yeah. I mean that sounds kind of – but I don't know because you always like playing – you have to play to win. You, have to, you can't yes. play not to lose. Right. You know what I mean? Yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes, yes. But and playing, but if winning, there are no consequences, winning doesn't matter. Yeah. So if it's like if if I'm just gonna yeah, be like right. if, if the CD recorder fucks up, and I'm like, oh, it happens. Then it's like, 
the CD recorder not like the, the win of yes because we it, successfully recorded this interview is not going to mean anything to you because if you fucked it up it, it, who cares it's just going to be like oh, okay they're, they're, they record it, maybe. you're right you're right because I'll admit there have been a couple times where like I've missed things I'm like oh, that's not a huge thing to Sam and then I think it was the banner that I didn't put up in the studio like on a Monday and then I didn't put it and then it came around Thursday and like halfway through the show like halfway through the first segment I realized oh I didn't put up the banner again uh, that Sam doesn't think that's a big deal. And then I came in on break, and you're like, you forgot the fucking banner again? You're not gonna, we're not gonna do the we banner don't, today. That, yeah, that's what I said. Banner? I said, oh, so we don't do the banner anymore, huh? Yeah. And then, and then I always love, I always love, when I'm, or I'll do it like, so we don't. I think he didn't notice. Yeah, so we clo- We keep the curtains closed, or? Oh, I fucking hate the curtains. <laughs> well. I know. I tell yeah. you every day. Yeah. Yep, and usually you get it. Usually you get it. Man, oh man. So yeah, that's where we're at right now. How are you feeling about everything, Kathy? Good? Sad, but good. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and I mean... Bittersweet, like blackberry preserves. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know Adrian likes blackberry preserves. I'll spread some on. You can take a taste. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. Listen to Sam Roberts' show and find out yeah. what that means. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you both for... Uh, for being here. Thank you, man. And for doing this. And Kathy, thank you for uh, co-branding this thing with me. We are going to figure out, you know, we got to let the dust settle and then everything will be figured out. What are we figuring out? What we're going to do. What time you're going to be on? No, I pretty much know what time oh. I'm going to be on. Did you see a tweet? Do you? I saw a tweet from SiriusXM <laughs> Help. That Ben. He's such a... He... Ben helped me out. Yeah. So helpful. Yeah. He yeah. Really, he's a good guy. No, I meant how we... Uh, Continue to podcast oh, yeah. and do all that. That will be determined. They can't stop us. They can't hold us down. They haven't yet. <laughs> they haven't yet. And they won't. Thank you all. We'll see you. Uh... Never. Bye. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> Loser. Peace out. <laughs>